the video accompaniment for this post here on Blender Artist. Hoping to get a little exposure for this code so that if someone wants to use it they can or maybe wants to give me some feedback because this is definitely uncharted territory for me. Um, I tried to implement these two papers which you can read at your leisure for implementing geodesic surfaces on Blender meshes. You can find all the relevant links in the post here and eventually this video will be right there. Um, there will be a blend file that you can follow along with that you can download here and the source code is a part of my cut mesh add-on which is a long way from being done but this is a big step in getting there. Okay so I'll start first with our blend file and just showing you a few examples in these scripts that come along with it on how to use it. Okay, so these are the important imports for this particular module. This first part here just sets up some selected verts and then the real magic or meat happens right here on geodesic walk. Okay, so what this does is we pick any seed vert or a starting point and then we propagate out the distance along the surface from there. So we'll do the elephant first because that one looks the most interesting. Make sure you're in object mode. All right. After this function is done walking all over the mesh, it returns a dictionary which has the verts, the B mesh verts as keys, and the geodesic distances as values. Okay, so there are some things you can do here to limit how far it will go, such as telling it a maximum number of iterations or only giving the mesh, um, a subset of the mesh for it to walk across. Okay, But for now we're going to do the whole thing, because um, I know that there are less than 25,000 verts in this mesh, so I just set the max iterations to that. Okay. okay once it calculates the distance field, it normalizes it and puts it in a vertex group. Okay, so you don't, this is not mandatory, this is just showing what you can do once you have this information. So we're going to weight paint to view the vertex weights. And to me, this looks very believable that as you fade from blue to red, you're further away along the surface from this seed point right here. Okay, for a more simple reality check we can do this grid All right. okay so once you have the distance field um, the next step into getting something useful from it would be to either sort those distances and only use a subset of mesh elements that are within a certain distance or do some behavior on the mesh that is proportional to the distance or um, find your way back from any point back to where you started in the shortest way possible and so to do that you need to calculate the gradient of distance on the mesh. So it's the equivalent of rolling downhill where gravity is what's pulling you down, or the, the shape of the surface and gravity is what would be pulling you down. Um, but for this, you're going down the distance function. Okay, so we'll come here to the this script, the face gradient script. And what this does is for any selected faces that you have, which I like to do just the whole darn thing. It makes for a very interesting visual effect. And for each face that you have selected, it will calculate the gradient on that face and add an edge into the mesh so that you can visualize it. If we come into edit mode, they are left selected so you can move them. You can move them if you're in the right mode. Or you can separate them. And I particularly like that. I think it's just a neat effect. If you set up multiple seeds, which I have not supported yet, but will in the future, I think this would make a really neat hair generator. Okay, 
onward. Once you have a gradient field calculated, you can then walk back up that gradient and find your way back to the source point. Okay, this is not necessary to do um, in terms of you don't have to do this these exact example scripts on each object. Um, these are just showing you that the pieces that are going on behind the scenes. So what I'll do is I'll select a group of points around the mesh. Make sure we have the right seed. And we'll go to the gradient descent. Okay, and those are the paths that it found the shortest way back. And this is very believable to me. You know, they, in the places where the mesh is not complicated, they're walking straight back to the mountaintop. When there are more features, they tend to kind of decide between walking straight to it or walking around it. So this comes into play in, I think, more of the game engine with artificial intelligence navigating a surface um, and things like that. Where I'm not 100% sure are my method is working perfectly is on the elephant. And the reason I'll show you is that the paths all tend to kind of converge like river tributaries. And if you look at the gradient field, um, you know, that you can clearly see there are natural flows and paths that kind of split and merge and split and merge. So I do think that my walking algorithm is faithfully walking where the gradient is telling it to go. I'm not convinced, however, that our gradient is perfectly accurate. Okay, and let's hide that. So as you can see, you know, these two paths come together and then kind of, oh, that one actually dead ends there. I don't know what's going on with that, but, so there are some things, like, this is very believable to me, but the, you know, this path here that decides to go around the hump, um, I'm unsure if that's truly the shortest path. It seems like going that way would be a lot shorter to me. So I don't know if that's a byproduct of my method for propagating the distance field or my method of determining the gradient or what. So that's left to be investigated. However, there is no doubt that these paths are finding their way back in a reasonable way to the seed location. And so that is useful in my opinion. Okay, finally let's see what we can do with Suzanne and see if we can't make our gradient, I mean our geodesic finder walk around a non-manifold and mesh, something I have not tried. So let's do some stuff down here. And the eyebrow is what? 4113. Oh, good. Yeah, so it does walk around the eye. Very interesting. And somehow this, uh, yeah, I mean, so that's that's believable to me. I would have thought that it would have tried to go there first, but anyway, I hope you enjoy it. I hope this is useful to someone, and thanks for watching.